Hello everybody, I'm Dominic, I'm Polish and living in Iceland from seven years and I will show you today the fire station and firefighters in the Keflavik station area. We will see what they want to say for us. Can I know your name and maybe your rank here? Yeah. My name is Sigurd Skarpjansson and, and I'm the deputy fire chief here in, in Reykjanesbær, Iceland. And uh, I'm going to show you here our first pumper, mm -hmm. the newest one, which is a Scania uh, built in Poland, which manufactured it, and it's our newest one, 2000, uh, mo 2019 model. It is a 4,000 liter water tank, mm -hmm. and it has, has a 17 foam system which is uh, pretty good for, for the environment. On the right side of the car is the booster line for the foam system and, and all the equipment for that. We have uh, like a many kinds of this here. Uh, mm -hmm. Also to go inside the walls and such, we can drill into walls and- Okay, put, like drills. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a spear mm -hmm. which you can put inside windows and such like underground fire. Yeah, something like yeah, that. underground fire and inside cars and such. And uh, the foam system is on this side. Uh, then we have a generator, and then we have the the rescue tools here. On this side is the foam system and the rescue tool. Here is the air compressor for the one seven system. And then we have a uh, Lucas uh, rescue tools, and and that's all on this side. Then we have a generator, like I said, and some lines, uh, power lines, and such. This is help with rescue people. Yeah, we have here a, a cutter and a spreader. Yeah, we have uh, all kinds of gear to. This is to open doors. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and then we have all the smaller things regarding the rescue, like like for for steering wheels. And On the other side of the car, there we have the the water side. Here so we have the high pressure hose line, uh, the feed lines for the for the pump, uh, lots lots of feed lines for the pump. Then we have a, like a uh, tools and such. This is for the for our gear when it's uh, it gets dirty in, in the smoke timing. We can take our gear off, put in this, and when it comes to a station, we don't have any pollution mm -hmm. because it goes straight to to wash, and we take it and, and wash it and. So the people will, will not go inside the, the pumper in, in dirty gear. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, some... Okay. Just some tools, oh, okay. uh, like uh, drillers and such. And then we have here some saws, uh, all kinds of saw, mm -hmm. extra uh, air bottles. Uh, fan for the smoke ventilation okay. and the smaller smaller things. Uh, you say light, yeah? Have it's it? a light must. Uh, uh -huh. Which is it's uh, just use batteries. Mm. I think so. Uh -huh. Maybe you should, uh, like you see, here we have a battery, mm -hmm. just for light light must. That's great. Okay. But of course you can put it, put it wherever you want. Mm -hmm. Of course. Might be helpful in the winter time. Yeah. Definitely. Like when we are rescuing people in, in, in the dark. Mm -hmm. Of course you have uh, lights on the fire truck, but if the cars roll over yeah. off the road, then, then you have maybe have to put some Extra. lights away from the, the road. Mm -hmm. So, and all of the batteries from the tools, the solar system, works also in the light mass. So, we shouldn't be, not be out of electricity. 
Yeah, yeah. of course. Then we have just, yeah, like, like here we have also the, the, to lift up cars with this. Mm -hmm. And the control system for that. And okay. So that's, that's part of the rescue equipment, but we didn't have place for it on the other side, so it's here, I can see. So uh, every firefighter have to make like paramedic uh, courses or something? Like uh, all or of our firefighters, fire. uh, because we are also the ambulance service in our area. And we are one of the four uh, professional uh, fire brigades which are working 24 hours. So we are, we are both firefighters and, and EMTs and some are paramedics. So in the beginning you just start as a firefighter, but if you uh, are hired, you have to go also and learn to be an EMT. In the beginning it's an EMT basic, then it's EMT advanced, and if some goes to learn to be a paramedic, which is the highest degree in the, mm -hmm. in the uh, ambulance service. So, and you start as a firefighter, you start uh, in the beginning, you take a pre-course to get a license to work as a firefighter, and then you have to go to the, the school the building authorities are responsible for the housing and, uh, and the building authorities. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, if, you're, if you get hired with us, we talk about it, it, it takes about three years to be a EMT and a professional firefighter. Mm -hmm. so Okay. That's, that's the main line, so sometimes it takes a little bit longer time, but it, it, it's, it should be around three years. Okay. And you have also uh, volunteer firefighters yeah. in Iceland? Uh, yeah. We have, uh, in, in Iceland there's a lot of uh, volunteer firefighters, uh, both volunteers and mainly part-timer. Uh, we here at Brunner and Sunisha, we are, we are about 32, which are working 24 hours, professional firefighters. Then we have a group of about 20 people, which are part-timers. When we get a, a big accident or, or, or bigger fires, where we need a lot of people, the emergency line 112 call them out for us. and. Uh, with both firefighters and uh, EMTs, we are 55 in this fire brigade. Mm -hmm. and, but working here on this station, we are 32. We are also uh, the ambulance service in Grindavik, uh, but they, they have their own uh, fire brigade in Grindavik. So we are only the ambulance service there. But we are serving about uh, 25,000 people in the fire brigade uh, and uh, three, uh, three villages, it's Reykjanesbær, Stuðinesbær and Vogar. And then we are also an ambulance service in Grindavik. So the southwest corner is, is our area, almost. Mm -hmm. It's okay. about... The longest way to drive is about 30 minutes, maybe. Then we have a we are uh, we're serving this area, and we have a hospital, local hospital here in Keflavik. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of our calls go directly to Reykjavik, to the University Hospital of Iceland. We are this year. It has been a little bit growing in the ambulance service, so I think it will be around. 3,700 calls on the ambulances, but on the fire, fire it's about somewhere around 150 to 200, both calls and practice, and and then I, I'm talking about everything: rescue, uh, pumping water, 
fires, all kinds of actions. Are, are the government uh, really helpful to like firefighters in Iceland and donations or something like that? Uh, we always want more, of course, like everybody, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we are a small nation, of course, mm -hmm. a few people, so in this area we are pretty good equipped with our gear and, and in this year we got three new ambulances, so or we got two last year, so all of our ambulances that we are using are new, fairly new. So, yeah, I think we are in, in, on a good way with it, but of course we always want something new. Mm -hmm. Like for us, our next thing would, would be uh, buy a new ladder, probably, mm -hmm. because in our, in our schedule we are thinking about buying a new ladder in 2023 or 4. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the next, next thing that we need, so, of course, but this equipment is expensive, of course, so mm -hmm. it's like always uh, depend on the money or, or the finance. Mm -hmm. uh, also, this the department is also new one, right? Because uh, our fire station is fairly new. We have been here almost a year. Uh -huh. It's only four or five days until it was one year that we came here. Uh, the contractor started building this fire station in 2018, in, in the fall. And we've moved here in October, I, th I think it was 15th of October last year. And we went from an fire, old fire station who, who, who had served, served us very well, but it was getting old, of course. And I think the, the square feet was about 770, and we then we have uh, three sets of containers, and it was getting up to 870 square meters. But we moved moved here to 2,250 square meters, so it's a big difference. And most of the people who work here, the working environment is much much better, and of course more more space and and everything. And do you know how old are the old building, like station? The old fire station was built in 1967, 54 years ago, and it, it was expanded in uh, 1988, about half of it. So it, it was getting pretty old and small, and, and it was getting a little crowdy around us because they have been building a a large building around us, so mm -hmm. it was not a good place to go. It was good for the, the hospital because it was a short time to go there, a short period. And, but here we are almost in the middle of our area that we are serving. So it's very good every round, everywhere we go, we can uh, go straight to the highway, so good to get to every area that we have to serve. The airport and uh, also the smaller village is uh, Sangeri and Karur, Vogar. So, because there are not uh, many who thought that it was like from the old station to the Reykjansbraut, it was two kilometers just to go up to the highway. So, it, it takes time, so we are on, on very good place here. Can we go inside and yeah. check? I can show you. Uh, we are using the Drager uh -huh. breathing apparatus, which, which we think is, of course, we think this is the best. And all the communication is uh, through the mask and directly to the, the, the Tetra. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, they are all connected to the helmet, so we think it is very good. We, we had uh, another brand before, but it's all pretty new. I think we started to go to Drager around 2015, 
I think. So we are only using this now. Uh, then we have also the thermal camera. So it's also from Drager and it's very good also. So like you see, mm. it works. Wow. It works, works very well. So yeah. it's very important f for, of course, smoke diving and mm -hmm. look for people inside. Like you see, uh, but you see also the image of me just yeah. in the in the window. Yeah, yeah, like a re reflect. Yeah, the reflect because uh, you have to understand if you go into a smoke and you see uh, come to a mirror, you, <laughs> you have to. Yourself. Yeah. So, but of course, it's sense the heat and and it's good for for the smoke diver to both get to the fire and also look for other people. In the front, we have a, uh, the captain and the driver, of course. Uh, there we have also one breathing apparatus. When you go outside, we have a, this for the, the monitor on the roof. We can control it wherever we want, outside of the car or inside oh. the car. Or, so, but inside, of course, we have a uh, what do you call it? iPad or yeah. with the maps and GPS. Yeah. Uh, here we have a set for staircases. We have to go up and a standpipe in the mm -hmm. higher buildings. We have the set that we can just take with us. The tank is 4,000 liter and it's a uh, 200 liter foam. Mm -hmm tank but because of the the one seven one seven system one seven foam mm -hmm. we use a small amount of it that uh, i think it's six tanks of water for this 200 liters of foam mm -hmm. we can fill the tank six times i think wow. so because we only use like i said 0 0.3 of the foam liquid. Yeah, this one is 2001 motor. Ah. It was built by Rosenbauer. Uh, it came from Norway. Ah. It was built in Norway. And it used to be our first pumper. And it has a 3000 liter pumper with 3000 liter water tank and 
200 liter foam tank. Mm -hmm. But that's the normal foam, which use uh, like a 3% foam liquid. And, and of course it's not with a computer like the newest one, because it's more like a manual. Uh, manual is something sometimes good. <laughs> Technics is of course uh, always getting more and more. Mm -hmm. And th there is a high pressure hose on bo both sides of this car. And like you see, it's the, almost the same. It's just on this side is, is, the, is the water. Spare bottles. Mm -hmm. We have the saw. Small ventilation on. And all kinds of gear. Here, here we have also two spare uh, breathing apparatus and some light mast and, and lines and such. So it's not that far from the newer one, but uh, of course uh, more like a manual everything. And, but it has served us very well. Very good truck. And but. Like I said, it's it's 20 years old, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. in perfect condition. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so that's not the problem. On the other side, this, like I said, here is everything. Like I said, mm -hmm. control of the pump is all manual. Uh, open for the water tank, high pressure, like you see. And so this is more like a yeah. As it is, just an older fire truck. Do you think it's getting, yeah. it's for you, work better on manual than electric? No, of course not. No. Not just because I'm an older fire <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I not mean that. <laughs> I, I was at the station when this one came, when he came new. So, okay. of course, uh, uh, always good when you get a new equipment. Everything is new when it's new, but it get older, of course, but it has been serving us very well and uh, no breakdown. It has been... Uh, it's never disappoint you? No, <laughs> it, it has been very good from the start. Uh -huh. But like I said, it's all almost manual. And it is same setup uh, on each side, high pressure hose reel and the lines, uh, but then uh, a little bit different. Uh, here we have a spare, like I said, foam liquid, 3%. And then, of course, we have just uh, like a uh, normal tools. Hooligans. Hooligans and uh, crowbars and hammers and such. Drugger mask. Yeah, here, here are the same. This is all the same. Ah, okay. Yeah. All the same. Mm -hmm. It's all the same system. And okay. like the same com communication. And then we have a AD here, light pack, defibrillator. And, but it's almost the same setup, but of course a little bit older. How, how many uh, masks you have on the department here? I think it's 21. Okay. Well, breathing apparatus. We have also one pumper in, in a smaller village here, Woga, which is, uh, there we have Ford 350, a small fire truck with uh, three uh, breathing apparatus and, and a pump and a foam system. It's a smaller one because that's the, uh, we uh, take us about 12 to 50 minutes to get there. Mm -hmm. So we have a small group of part-timers there. And so they can be the first response. And then a fire truck comes from the main station mm -hmm. to help them. So we have also a other a small fire station in Sankiri. But <coughs> there we have a one uh, pumper, but he's functional, but he's not uh, on service as we speak, because when we moved here, uh, we are closer to Sankir, so uh, it's, uh, we didn't need to have a, a pumper there already. So, so 
So, but there we have a, a classroom, a place where we have our training and and some education for the ambulance service and such. So we use it a lot, but not as a uh, not as a fire station like not with an active pumper there. Anything special on the on the cockpit? No, no. it's basic scania. Basi yeah, basic scania, just uh, <laughs> li like they say, uh, GPS and such, and uh, all this sort of normal system, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, it, it's our uh, second pumper out, if we get a bigger calls. And uh, then we have also uh, one more here, which is 4x4 truck. Mm -hmm. And we are also we are getting a new, new old. <laughs> uh, we were buying from uh, Germany one uh, fire truck, which is uh, 2010. But that fire truck is 4x4. So we are gonna switch, uh, switch this 4x4 that we have here and, and that will go to Vogar at the fire station there and a new old one will be here and uh, it's good uh, even though this area here is not uh, it's not often heavy snow here but it's good to have one 4x4 in case. It's also built from Rosa Bar, yeah. <coughs> and it was because I don't know, you know, Sankiri, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the small wheels here, they used to have their own fire brigade. Mm. And we took over around 2012. In 2050, it was integrated into Bruno and Sjöfisha. Then this truck came to us, and he's 2000 model. And it's the same as the fort that we have in war. So uh, we are trying to get this 2010 model to change it so we have a 
like 2019, 2010, 2001, mm -hmm. it's not good to have it all around 2000, oh. all getting old, uh -huh. of course. Yeah, so, yeah. so we mm -hmm. are trying to eliminate that a little bit. Rotation. Yeah, yeah rotation. It should be, in our schedule it was uh, planned that the first pumper would never be older than 10 years. But then we had the, the crisis and then we had the mm. <laughs> uh, COVID and so, so it was a, a little bit changing. So this is like, would be same equipment? Is it like basic equipment for every yeah, it's track? Yeah, it's, it's a basic equipment. It is a 3000 liter pumper, mm -hmm. 3000 liter water tank. <coughs> But uh, only different is this one is 4x4. It's a higher truck, and small advantage for small people like me mm -hmm. because it's pretty high. So we have to have a platform to work with it, of course. <laughs> and it's almost the same setup, high pressure in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a manual pumper like, uh, like Scania before. And it's almost the same setup, of course. Feed lines, uh, generator, uh, crowbars, uh, all kinds of mm -hmm. hand tools, light mast, and, and everything. So it's almost the same. And also equipment with Schrager breathing apparatus. So, but it's it's 2000 models, so it's getting a little bit old. All the light mast and such are, are used a generator to get the electricity. So it's all the same, it's just the uh, uh, same small equipment, uh, power lines, yeah, like I said, light mast and such. And mm -hmm. uh, the other side is almost the same, but for uh, just uh, lines to feed the, 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 the pump and it's just a little bit uh, like I say older system but almost the same same setup. Mm -hmm. You have saw here. <laughs> yeah this just a smaller smaller rescue equipment mm -hmm. just uh, in case we have also a, a rescue tools in the fort that we have in the small village, Wager. That used to be our, our rescue car, but with the new one we got the, the new Lucas electric rescue tools. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Wager we have a Hormatro, the core system. I have a question about different things. Yeah. Uh, when it's volcano got start eruption yeah it was really busy here what, what's it going on there it was not because of, it's in the land of Grindavik, uh -huh. and they have their own uh, fire brigade and, and their own uh, community civil protection so of course it was uh, a few meetings here and and uh, of course we are part of it but it was mainly in Grindavik. Mm -hmm. but uh, after a few months, we're getting a lot of calls mm -hmm. because of people who was getting injured when it was walking to the to it. Uh, we we had to set up a, a shift. We have always a one uh, EMT or paramedic in the mountain during the day when it's most of people, and he is on uh, a jeep here with uh, with every equipment to take care of the people and and also a uh, EKG to send uh, heart, uh, with a heart monitor. So if we get a people who was getting sick or injured, mm -hmm. he can uh, take care of it. Uh, or if it seems like it, he calls the ambulance from Green Tech. Mm -hmm. So we have a shift there on every day, except Monday, I think. And, uh, and that's just be, depend on how many in the mountain. If the, the weather is very bad, they close it, but uh, always when there are people up there, they, they, we have a man on ship there. Mm -hmm. 
so he is in good contact with the ambulance and also the the police and the, some people who are taking care of, of this area there. In the situation there, it was something like, let's say, firefighters department think to control this lava field or they know about they will not be like in invasion or risky? No, but I know the fire brigade in, in Grintag, they went up there uh, in the beginning because they were uh, afraid about the pollution, mm -hmm. the, the lava was skimming, the gases and such, so I, I know they had some weekends, they had the firefighter there with the breathing apparatus if something happened, if they had to rescue some people who fainted or something, mm -hmm. get s some pollution. but. It was only, I think it was uh, for uh, two weekends or something, because it was need, not needed. But of course, people has to be aware of the gases and yeah. don't get too close. And uh, that's the most problem for us, is to get people to understand that. And, but it's the same now. People are going, walking on the lava, even though the civil protection uh, and has been asking people not to go onto the lava and don't walk on, on it then. But because it's under can be still it can be running like lava <laughs> and only a shell over it. So it can be uh, even though it's uh, it's getting smaller now or not as much as it was, but it was it was getting up wherever you you Maybe you thought it was just a, a covered cold lava, mm -hmm. but like you say, underneath it was burning hot and you wouldn't have to ask if, if they get down to that, so, <laughs> so it would be a catastrophe. Do you know about some accident? A lot of uh, injuries, in injuries uh, people falling. Uh, Break the legs and uh, one heart attack because often people was going also getting very cold and, uh -huh. and so people were not dressed for the <laughs> occasion. <laughs> so, but we have all kinds of sickness and, and uh, like I said, broke legs and uh, injuries and but nothing related to the the hot lava. Ladder truck? Yeah, it's, it's a telescopic ladder. It's from Pronto Skylift, 32 meters uh, high, 1996 model, so it's getting what, 25 years old. That will be our next priority to buy a new ladder, and it's, it's on our schedule around 23 or 24. And, but it works well. Uh, we got it when it was uh, 40 years old and it was all rebuilt, almost painted and so it was and is in very good, good condition. Uh, most of the equipment on the ladder is of course uh, related to working on heights and, and uh, cutting roofs and such, like, like some saw and everything just to cut through the roofs and like I said lines and everything, everything related to working in heights of course and yeah also a chainsaw with a carpet teeth what what is there is it like this one yeah this is just to uh, some platform to for the feet yeah just to get a little bit broader platform on the ground if you are on soft ground or something. Mm -hmm. We always use it because even though you are on concrete or something, you never know how thick it is, so we always use the platform also. Even though we can put it up on just a few feet. Mm -hmm. Like I said, all manual, 
uh, no computer here, so <laughs> Shantam is good, but Shantam is better to, if you can just contact the, yeah. the computer to get if something is wrong. But it's, uh, yeah, like I said, it's all manual here, but works well. You can also do it manual just by the sticks. Yeah, a few things you have to do and, and it goes by itself, but if you need to adjust it, you can do it by, by the sticks also. Is it hard to control this letter? No, it's not. Even though it's scary in the beginning, but of course, and, but it's not. So it doesn't go that fast because it's telescopic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's no problem controlling this. Uh, how much time need to, let's say, put it up? Yeah, put yeah. it up to some point. If you, of course, you raise the, the biggest uh, arm first. I think it's about four or five minutes. Okay. To get the, 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 we have to get the biggest arm up first, of course, and then it's just how, how fast the hydraulic liquid yeah. goes. So <laughs> I wouldn't say it was quick. But but you have a water cannon in, in the top and such. You use it like that and work on, on, on roofs and high, higher buildings. Okay. Just to put, uh, put through roofs for comfort spaces and, mm -hmm. and you have a mist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just, just some crowbars and such. Everything to work on, mm -hmm. on the roof, of course. We can use it to get somebody with a with a shell. We can get somebody from maybe from from sea or something. If we we can use it like a crane, a kind of crane, of course. Mm -hmm. But we can lift with a with a basket. I think it's thousand kilo. We will uh, probably buy a, a ladder not a telescopic, because it's, it's more quicker to work with. Mm -hmm. But even though we are very, we think this is a very good truck, but I think the next, next one will be a letter. It's more quicker if you have to rescue somebody from a, from a balcony or something. Uh, do you have many intervention per year? I can say it is, like I said, it's maybe 50, 150 to 200 calls per year but I think maybe 70 80 is related to fire both, both small and, and big fires and then you have a, uh, some rescue pumping water from the like basement and yeah. flats and such uh, and all other activities like training and such. To fire it is getting lower but uh, the ambulances are getting higher, the calls for the ambulances. Oh. This one is to make uh, the first one go up and down. This one is to make the second one go up and down. This is for rotation and this is to go out, to go higher and lower. So first of all, we just go from this one. Any like uh, fire action on high like this? Uh, not me. I've been so short time. Yeah. yeah. But uh, this is mainly for uh, we use it more for rescue and to get on the roof to ventilate. But we also have monitor mm -hmm. placed on it so we can use it on fires for water. But I have not used it in action. It, it was any fire action on high like this? Yeah, I think so. But as you can see, our buildings are not... Yeah. Only few of them are high in, in this area. But in Reykjavik we have higher buildings. The 
15 liter water tank so we can use it to feed some trucks far away and in, in the end here we have a, a like a pool 10,000 liter pool it's just to collect water mm -hmm. 10,000 mm -hmm. liter so kind of big yeah and then we have just uh, like i said connect to the pump and, and mm -hmm. we ca can fill it up if we can get some uh, some pond or, or sea or something we can fill it up by the pump big it's pump. just some hand tools <coughs> just to connect to the pump and such, but mm -hmm. it's mainly water tank, of course. This car here is, is a kind of multitask for us. It's, uh, we built it for, for our uh, air bank, so we can fill, fill up the air bottles on scene. It has also, we use it for the hazmat gear, and everything related to hazmat. If we get a small hazmat accident, we we take this truck with us. We can uh, go into uh, into the hazmat gear inside. It's kind of shelter for us because in Iceland it's not always good weather. Mm -hmm. So, and then we have also all kind of absorbents and pumps and such, and to collect like poison things and such inside this truck. Mm -hmm. And then we have a, a generator on the other side and all kinds of extra hoses, uh, absorbents for, for like oil, spill, spilling oil yeah. uh, on both sides. And, and like for if something is uh, spilling on floor or, or, mm -hmm. or on the ground, we can some covers some covers and such. On the other side, we have some pumps just petrol for the, for the generator. Mm -hmm. and another, another spare. Good to have. So Ex extra one there. Yeah. yeah. This is our oxygen bank. So we can, after we smoke them, we can put our bottles here to refill them with air. So then we use this. And these six tanks are full of pressed air. We have. Uh, one uh, full body suit and for all kinds of chemical and also if we have water spill we can take the water out. Uh, so what is this room is? Uh, this is room is of course uh, for maintaining uh, of the cars and, and, and the trucks but it is also when we get a, a big call with a, maybe a lot of smoke diving and, and the gear is all dirty, uh, then we take it inside here and we take it to wash it roughly here and then we put it in this washing machines, both the bottles and, and, and the mask and everything. And uh, the firefighter gear goes into the washing machine seen here so we call this the our dirty area so when when we have uh, washed everything when it goes into the other room here it should be all clean because when it goes then through this this room there and, and, and inside the 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 carrots mm -hmm. they should all be clean yeah. so we will leave the the pollution and, and the dirt and, the, uh, and everything just inside here. This might be dangerous, right? Yeah, because that uh, for firefighter is uh, it, the smoke because the, our skin is the biggest organ. Yeah. So Sensitive. we are getting a lot of pollution through our body, and that's why we we clean everything here. That's why this is our dirty area. So when everything goes through it, it should be clean. And we, like I said, put the fire gear here inside. And of course, put it on. It takes about uh, one hour to clean it or something like that. We put a four, four gear in here. When it comes out here, it goes into the dryer. 
like I said, the power bottles uh, and the, the backrest and the, and the mask comes here. And when we put all, everything together, it should go here through this door into the garage or clean. So it should not be any smoke inside the garage. That, that's the main purpose of it. This is like special car for Vulcan stuff or? Uh, yeah, uh, when we had to get uh, some people in the mountain and we have a AKG, some splints. Uh, we have also a, a one breathing apparatus just in case if we had to, if somebody had some pollution and we had to rescue him just to take care of people which are which are up in the mountain if, if they get some illness, splints, uh, compressor. It's, it's all for for this one man to do if, if, if he can help people uh, he can take a uh, he can monitor the heart and send it to the hospital and if he, he get the results that then he could just call for the ambulance to come and pick up the people so it's just to have somebody on the scene a lot of people are walking there and it's a rough area so people are falling and cut themselves or broken legs, broken legs and such. These are just our daily cars because of both uh, fire prevention when they go in and to look in uh, the companies and such. Uh, uh, this car is also for uh, it's always uh, one liter on like in weekends and nights mm -hmm. it's always one of us at home uh, if uh, you have to end to the station we have to come and call with more people and mainly uh, for just a daily routine uh, fire prevention uh, meetings and such it's not necessary to take track so you no, use that yeah, yeah? okay and, then, and we have that transport just for a good car for our uh, training sites and uh, just to yeah rough rough things like mm -hmm. moving something or uh, to go to go to the training site on on the gear and such but mainly mainly these cars are for the fire prevention so now we are in the control room in fire station and here is a lot of new computer it for the civil protection and emergency management and and uh, we will have a uh, training uh, at the airport later this month and the plan is is to make that the, the first time we use this mm -hmm. control room for the training a lot of people come here it's the police it's us uh, the people from east Avia, from the airport uh, from the, the health service uh, and uh, the rescue and the red cross We'll all come here together and and, uh, and take part of this training.
because I see it's different rank. Can you explain what, what's your rank here? Yeah, the ranks uh, is for the fire department. Mm -hmm. So you get uh, one stripe when you finish the basic training, and two when you finish the professional fireman training, mm -hmm. and the third one after 10 years. Okay. So I've been here for almost 16 years. 16? Yeah. Great. Okay. So you have experience? Some, yeah. <laughs> so basically what we have here is uh, an ER on wheels. We have most of the stuff we have at the hospital, emergency room. Uh, for instance, for instance, we have uh, all the breathing support you need, oxygen, all the masks, and and and, and you know, mm -hmm. basic basic breathing all the way. Uh, this is the a good case. There we have uh, everything we need, all, all the medicine we have. Mm -hmm. here, right. This is like first aid kit or more like more medicine? Uh, this is mostly for medicines yes. and IV access mm -hmm. and fluids. So here we have the IV access kit. Wow. All the basic stuff we need for that. Mm -hmm. Injection. Yeah. This is all we need for IV access. And these are the injectable medicine we have. All kinds, uh, both for trauma and painkillers. Painkillers, yeah, and cardiac medicine. Basically. All the medicine you need in the field. Okay. So these are the same medicines that you would find in a, in an ER room. A little bit more. Mm -hmm. We have these bone needles. Mm -hmm. We basically. Drilled in the bone. Okay. <laughs> so we use we use those a lot. This is just for oh. blood pressure, mm -hmm. blood sugar, fluids, oh. and pre-filled adrenaline. adrenaline. Yeah. Uh, what is that? It's glucagon. again. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, it's for low blood sugar. Yeah. So it's it, it draws the, the sugar from the system out to the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Basically, all we need for a basic life support. Mm -hmm. This is all the airway assistance we need. Oxygen that's in the middle, okay. right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is an ampu bag for, for adults. Mm -hmm. and this is a breathing machine. Mm -hmm. it is, it's oxygen driven, it has no batteries or nothing. And this is perfect. This, this, this is a tube we most use, uh, regularly use. We also have ED uh -huh. tubes. Like this one. And we also have this fancy thing. Just helps us see down the throat. Uh -huh. Makes it easier for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can be pretty hard, especially out in the field with no lights. Or nothing. Yeah. Okay. Good. Different sizes for different people. Mm -hmm. For kids, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have a specialized case for the kids. That's uh -huh. it. Do you have many situations you can you have to use all this equipment here? Uh, yeah. Mostly, just not. Not all of it, but most of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very regularly. 
So this is for the kids. kids yeah. It's not very big. <laughs> Tiny. Yeah. And small bags. Mm. This is the smallest mask we have. And we also have the ITL tubes. <laughs> Small. <laughs> for girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For neonites. Yeah. Just new, newborns. Newborns. Yeah. Also ET tubes. So this is our uh, trauma pack. <laughs> Or cuts, bruises, bandage. Yeah, yeah. Bandage. Yeah. This is for burns. Coolers. Yeah. Coolers. Yes. And everything it has to be sterile. Tourniquet. This is uh, a case for possible birth. So we have here all the medicine and things you need for a possible birth mm -hmm. in the car or, or, or at home or anywhere. anywhere. A small oxygen bag. A bottle, yeah. Yeah, one okay. bottle and, and we got, you know, mm -hmm. Basic stuff to go for for for, uh, for Airway Hill. Mm -hmm. So it's an easy carry back. So you have to, if you have to go along with it, it's a good thing. Okay. So basically, what we have here, we also have a separate set in the car itself. Mm -hmm. We have hot fluids. Mm -hmm. so for hypothermia or something like that? Yeah, both for hypothermia and, and just for a, a regular use. Uh, because uh, we, don't, we don't want to cool people down with, with a cold fluid. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's better to have it uh, at closest temperature to the body. In this case it's 34.7. So it won't cool you down. And, and won't shock the body. Mm -hmm. We have cold fluids in, in, in the bags. Uh, we prefer the hot ones in most cases. But if, if people are hot, it's better to use the cold one. Yeah, but here is not much often, right? No. <laughs> because of weather. Yeah. Okay. Use it for burns, everything you need for burns. Yeah. Basically the same thing you saw in the bag. Mm -hmm. And the history about the patient, we have to write it all down as accurately as, as we can. And, and as we say, if it isn't written, it hasn't been done. So it's like inspection, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a ch checkbox. Just check. Have you have you done this? And gives you a perspective, you know, for the for the whole history. You write on the history, previous history, previous medical history. Mm -hmm illnesses, the medication for, for the patients, uh, which medication are they using previously, and, and all the things we do for, for them. Are, are, we, are we administrating any medicine? Mm -hmm. uh, are we putting up an IV access? And which medication and, and how much of, of them are we giving? And we all, all, always have to sign for all the medication we give. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has to be filled out as accurately as, as you can. As I say, if, if it isn't written, it hasn't been done. Mm -hmm. Here we have two big oxy oxygen tanks. So basically more of what we have in the bags. More empty bags. Cooling bags, we use those a lot. For minor injuries, twisted ankles or something like that. Yeah. 
a second set of the same thing we have have in the bags just more accessible when you're working this is a suction pump basically a vacuum mm -hmm. uh, we use it to you know if we have fluids or blood coming out of people use this a lot and this is life pack 15 for it's a life support and we, here we can get ETGs of the heart, uh, blood pressure measure, um, oxygen saturation measure, uh, all the measurements we need to have to you know, uh, see the status of the patient. So this is mostly on yeah. all day. From this we can send all the information we take to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's safe information, yes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a closed circuit between us and the hospital. And, and you know, ask for directions if, if, we, if we want help with some cases. Mm -hmm. And it makes, makes it easier to uh, assess, you know, what to do and, and, and you know, how to follow up. It's a CPR machine. CPR. It's a pretty powerful. Well, you don't have to do manual, right? No, he, he does the work of two men, mm -hmm. uh, and always with a, you know, perfect CP CPR. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, so it frees four hands, mm -hmm. and and gives the patient a, a, a perfect CPR all the time, and he keeps on going and going. Works very well. Yeah. Helps many people. Yeah, he does. This is a, a stair helper. Mm -hmm. You can take people down, downstairs or upstairs. Here we have another stretcher, same as on the other side. Okay. Colors. My colors. This is broken legs, broken hand, broken limbs. Yeah. All the ambulances are, are 4x4, so not for off-road, but you can handle a bit of snow mm -hmm. and are, are more, more secure in, in a uh, frost or, or, or slippery roads. Uh, why you become a firefighter? Because it's a versatile job. You get to see a lot of things. Uh, you get to learn a lot of things. Um, get to help people so though it's often pretty hard but most of the time uh, things end good for the patient and the people we are, we are serving so yeah it's a giving job mm -hmm.